Hi, everyone. It's Doreen. I'm joined by my good friend, sister in Christ, Jen Nizza. You've seen her in my other videos. Links are below to her website and her social media. We're going to be talking today about automatic writing. What is it? And what's the problem with it? And how does that compare with the Bible being God breathed? We're going to talk about how many deceptive teachings come from automatic writing, including my old new age books. You know that I wrote over 70 books and card decks, and the bulk of them were done by automatic writing. And I was also inspired by another heretical blasphemous new age book called A Course in Miracles that I studied for 20 years before I was saved that was made by automatic writing and was purported to be Jesus. And so, Jen, thank you so much for being with me today on this very important topic. Thank you so much for having me, Doreen. It's always a pleasure to team up with you and expose the deception of these new age practices. Yeah, this is something that's so important that we both get questions about. And people are confused because they say, well, wasn't the Bible written by automatic writing? And so let's clear up that confusion right away. If you go to 2 Timothy 3.16, Um, Paul says that all scripture is God breathed, which is the Greek word theonostos, which is only used in that sentence, which means in Greek translated to English, God breathed, inspired by God due to the inspiration of God. And then Peter, who was, as we know, lived and worked with Jesus for three years during Jesus's earthly ministry says, no prophecy was ever made by an act of human will but men moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God, 2 Peter 1.21. Uh, Psalm 12.6, the words of the Lord are pure words, like silver refined in the furnace. And Paul also says that we speak these things not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the Spirit, capital S, the Holy Spirit, combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual words in 1 Corinthians 2.13. And I think the most important um, Uh, passage we want to camp on for just a minute is that in 1 John 4, the Apostle John, the closest apostle to Jesus during his earthly ministry called the beloved apostle, the beloved disciple, he tells us and warns us all that we've got to test the spirits. When we look at something that's automatically written, does it confess Jesus biblically? Does it confess that he came to earth fully God, fully man, that he's the son of God who died for our sins? who rose from the dead and is now at the right hand of the father and will come to judge us again. Does it say that? Now, when I was automatically writing and it was over 70 books, card decks, and I I wished I had a a magical lasso like um, Wonder Woman that I could just recall them all, but they're they're out there. The best I can do when, because other people still continue to sell and use them tragically, even though I told them not to, is, is when people contact me because they have these products, I share the gospel with them and why I tell them to burn those products. Um, what I was inspired by um, was not God to make those products, but um, Satan masquerading as an angel of light, who he had been doing with me my whole life. I actually had those experiences. I actually heard, felt, thought, received those words. So that was not something I made up or fake. It was an actual experience. Um, interesting. I don't think I've talked about this much, Jen. I, I put myself through college as a secretary and I worked as a secretary for state farm insurance, prudential insurance, um, uh, Boeing. I worked Boeing for a while. And one of the things I did at those jobs was I took dictation. I had earplugs in my ear like I do now. And I had a foot press, like a sewing machine foot press, where I would press the, the, the button and my boss's voice would be in my ear from a tape. And then I would type what he or she said onto a letter. And I did that for years. And I got to, to be like 85 words a minute, really fast and accurate. And so when I was doing automatic writing, I was typing most of the time, sometimes handwriting, and I would go into a, a trance on purpose. I would I would pray a prayer of protection, which is baloney because you don't get protected by God while you're sinning. And and I would go into this trance and I would just ask for God, Holy Spirit, the angels, and Archangel Michael, and all these dead people, which you don't talk to the dead. I know now. I repent for that. And I would just ask everybody to give me messages. And I would be this passive conduit. And I used to say 
and I regret this, repent for it now. I used to say I was God's secretary, that I was taking dictation from him or his angels. And it fails the test of the spirit from 1 John 4, because I was not pointing people to Jesus as the Bible introduces us to God, the second person of the Holy Trinity, the, the King of Kings, the Lamb of God who died for us because he was sinless. It, none of my books or cards said that. None of the automatic writing processes that we're going to talk about today say that. Sarah Young's Jesus Calling does not channel the true Jesus, as we'll talk about. Um, and one of the reasons is she contradicts Jesus in the Bible, and she keeps changing his words in different editions. And Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So he does not change or contradict himself ever. Anyway, so I was inspired by A Course in Miracles, which is this blasphemous book that I studied for 20 years. And it was purported to be the voice of Jesus coming through a, a psychiatrist named Helen Shookman and her partner, Bill Thetford. Um, and, and it was supposed to be Jesus correcting what the Bible got wrong. And I just ate that up, Jen. Wow. I just, I just ate that up. Cause I, I always bought into that new age demonic myth that the Bible was corrupted and that there was missing books. And, and I never researched that. I just parroted that myth, which the devil says, cause the devil does not want us to read the Bible. Cause he knows that we'll leave him and that we'll follow Jesus. If the Holy spirit reveals the gospel to us while reading the Bible. So the course in miracles was channeled and the original book, it's huge. I mean, it's a tome. And I had the original pages called the Urtext, and I would study it every day. And I believed it. My mom was who got me into it. She, um, and it was popularized by Marian Williamson. She, Marian didn't write it. She popularized it with her book about it. And, and so I, I would listen to this, to the course of miracles on audio and I would read it every day. And I wanted to be like Helen Shookman. So I wanted to do automatic writing. So I did my first channeled book, Angel Therapy, that way. It made no, the book made no sense to me when I would, I didn't even know it was coming through me. And, and I wouldn't, I would sort of read it, but I just turned it in raw to the uh, publisher and they published it as it came through me and people loved it. And I didn't understand it because I thought I, I, this makes sense to you. <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me. And, and I, I regret that, but it encouraged me to keep going with channeled things. And I, I wrote a horrible book called Archangels and Ascended Masters. That was a reference book that had all the different new age deities, you know, the, the all of them. And I, I would, I would go into a trance and get a message from each of them and then give a little history of them. And I, I just wish I could rewind time and had recognized back then that these were demons. Um, it, it's just, it's just tragic that the devil used me as a vehicle. I mean, but you're under so much deception when you're when you're in the new age, it's you're so spiritually blind, it's so difficult to see the truth. And like you said, I have to echo it. The devil does not want us in the Bible. He does not want us to have a confidence in the Bible. He doesn't want us knowing the gospel, knowing the truth and knowing Jesus Christ. Although I come from a different, such a different background, although we're so similar, uh, Doreen, I would not... Um, I did not even care about the Bible. I was culturally Catholic. I went to mass sometimes. I didn't think the Bible was real or fake or anything. I didn't have any idea about what it said and I had no desire to go towards it. And when supernatural experiences started happening for me, I was just quick to believe what anybody else had to say about it, saying that it was a God-given gift and once I went down that rabbit hole in the new age and I started doing automatic writing, I can't even recall if I heard about automatic writing in the divination group that I was a part of where the leader of that group also actually said the Lord's prayer as protection before we would go into divination practices, which is just like, it blows my mind. Um, as we know, we can't drink from the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons, but that's deception. And when I did automatic writing, as I, I refer to it as a reading on a piece of paper, that's how I would do it. I would ask questions for myself. I would turn to um, these demons for knowledge, like I did with every other psychic I would go to. My contemporaries, we would read one another. I was always seeking 
uh, knowledge or temporary comforts. Of course, we know they're only temporary, but back then you think that you're really going to get some peace, that you're really going to get some comfort from knowledge and you're going to get answers. So I would write down questions, but I would actually do automatic writings for other people too. I also, I meditated, I used sage to burn around myself before I would go into this. This is all a ritual. It's witchcraft. It's all a ritual. And I would sit down and just like you, the spirits would come through and just start writing through me. And I would even do past life regression, automatic writings for my clients. And there was always something in there, a hook, something that resonated with the client, with the person. And we know that that happens because evil spirits are seeing things, they know things, they're powerful, they're intelligent, and they've been studying mankind for ages, but they hate mankind and they hate God. As a matter of fact, automatic writing is an occult practice and it has been for many, many ages. They used to make on a planchette that wooden board with a vertical, I think, yeah, a vertical pencil and mediums would use this for seances too. And they would do these automatic writing. People are familiar with the Ouija board. That's an example of automatic writing as well, where spirits are, again, coming through. And there is power behind this. And they are moving. And there is, there is um, you know, there are answers that come and dates and, and, and things of that nature. Uh, it is so sad thinking back. Uh, like you said, being a pawn for the devil in, in that way, it was so sad because not only were we deceived, but we were part of his plan to deceive other people. I thank God that we're new creations now and, and, and we can walk in the freedom of that and that we've both repented from these, um, from these new age practices. But it is really important that people understand what automatic writing is and why it is dangerous. Revelation 22, 18 to 19 says not to add or take away from scripture. So I saw three brothers in Christ who were talking about how the Holy Spirit was writing through them. And they called it, you know, their journaling or what have you. Then, of course, you mentioned Jesus calling Sarah Young. And of course, we also have the Enneagram that's infiltrating the church that the um, creator of the Enneatypes confesses to using automatic writing. So how can we make that differentiation for the church, Doreen? How, how can Christians know? Is it the Holy Spirit talking through them? Well, the devil is the father of lies, and he's the great counterfeiter. And so when we look at Genesis 3, uh, where Satan is introduced into the garden, we see that he tempts Eve with this, with her desire for hidden wisdom, that he tempts her that she's going to be like God, and she's going to know truth and, and evil. And so that temptation is still here that the devil is, is tempting people. Look, I'm going to teach you this, the real secret. I'm going to teach you the hidden secrets and wisdom. You're going to be special. You're going to be like God. You're going to be like a goddess. And so what he, he, he doesn't come to people with uh, the devil suit on and, and horrible, terrible things. He comes with a mixture of truth and lies. And so with, uh, for instance, A Course in Miracles that I was a student of for 20 years, he, he mixes in the truth of the importance of forgiveness. That's absolutely something that's biblical, that Jesus emphasized, that you've got to forgive because God forgave you, right? But then The Course in Miracles twists it and says, but there was no crucifixion, there's no devil, there's just the ego, and all sorts of other blasphemy. If you say, well, I want to hear from the Holy Spirit, the devil's going to say, sure, I'll be the Holy Spirit. I'll be your higher self. I'll be Jesus. I'll be the angel. I'll be God. Neil Donald Walsh, who I toured with for many years, has a bunch of best-selling books where he says he's talking to God, but it contradicts the Bible. His God says there's no such thing as right or wrong. It's all relative. That's not God. That's Neil Donald Walsh's imagination, you know, his wishful thinking, or it's the devil or both. Or a lot of people say, I'm going to do automatic writing to get my, my deceased loved one to come through. And, and so it seems real. Sometimes I remember when I would use a pen or a pencil that my hand would be taken over and something else was writing through me and it was spooky. I think it's probably why I typed instead of using a pen. Um, and so it's, it's a real experience of a real spirit coming through. As you mentioned, Jen, 
because mm-hmm. we were both mediums, that the demons know how to give us information or it's something in our thought process. We want to hear from Johnny. We remember that time we went on a picnic with Johnny and lo and behold, the automatic writing talks about the picnic. Oh, I loved that picnic. And you think, oh, this is really Johnny. And it's not, it's not, it's, we cannot talk to the dead. If they were believers and were believers, we will see them again in heaven. Until that time, our comfort comes from God, from reading the Psalms, from other Christians as as a support group, um, pray for yourself and, and grieving people to be comforted, but don't go looking for messages from them because the devil uses anything like that as an opening to get in there and lead you away from Jesus, to lead you away from the Bible and to lead you to false teachings. Amen. And Satan does masquerade as an angel of light as per 2 Corinthians 11, 14, and 15, as do his servants. And an angel is a messenger. And sometimes these messages being delivered seem good, just like what you were saying. You think it's your deceased loved one. Um, and the person delivering the message to you, the, the actual, the, the medium or the tool of divination. So automatic writing is a tool of divination, but so were we. We were vessels for that. We were, we're people, but we were mediums. We were a tool of divination. And we may seem, I'm sure you did, and I, I know I did too, kind of seem the girl next door, innocent, loving, compassionate, um, and kind, not some scary, like you mentioned before, how the devil appears in movies, um, not some, you know, gothic dress, no outward appearance that looks scary. Uh, the messenger can seem innocent and the message can seem innocent, but Satan masquerades as an angel of light. Yep. And we, I, I love what you mentioned from Genesis 3. Our spiritual DNA is to always want more knowledge, more wisdom, and we, our flesh nature, our, our, our flesh wants um, more than what we've been given. And we desire, we crave knowledge and wisdom, and we are prideful. We are prideful. Is that that desire for secret wisdom is what opens the doors to demons and the doctrines of demons. So we must go back to the Bible is sufficient. That yes. Um, as Hebrews 1 said, is that God in ancient times, long ago to our fathers, spoke through the prophets, and in these end times, spoke through his son, Jesus. The canon of the Bible's closed. And even though there's nothing in the Bible about computers or you know things that atomic bombs and such, it, it talks about every aspect of human personality and human sinfulness. So you can plug it into anything that's going on today in terms of understanding the dynamics with the government, with world situations, with your family, with yourself. Um, we just have to make sure it's our Bible study is not me centered, which automatic writing is always me centered. It's always like Sarah Young in Jesus calling her false Jesus strokes people's egos and tells people how wonderful they are. And that feels really good. I mean, who doesn't need their ego stroked, right? Well, we don't actually, it's, it can lead to narcissism and, and takes our eyes off of Jesus on the cross. When we study Jesus's actual words as written down by eyewitnesses to him, they, he never strokes egos. The closest he said is John the Baptist was the greatest among men. And that was it. He, so he, he doesn't talk like Sarah Young's Jesus. He doesn't talk like Helen Schickman's Course in Miracles Jesus. He doesn't give us number types like Claudia Naranjo, as you mentioned, who used automatic writing. Here's Claudia Naranjo is interesting. He, he was a psychiatrist who was a close friend of Carlos Castaneda, who was a best-selling author of books about shamanism and shape-shifting and using mescaline and peyote to get visions and journeys. And so did Claudia Naranjo use these psychedelic drugs to get visions. And he also was really good friends with Fritz Perls, the father of what's called gestalt therapy, psychoanalysis um, that I studied for years in in Chapman University. Um, And so Fritz Perls is all about dreams. And so this is the background of the man who came up with these, these nine enneotypes. Let's put the clip right here where he's admitting that he used automatic writing. He's boasting about it. At the conference, I told them I had made up this tale that all this came from millennia ago and and that this information came from the Sufis. Yes. I told him 
that actually Oscar Richardson had not described any of the enneotypes either. Actually, in the uh, uh, seven months we spent with him, he devoted about six hours to talk about the enneagram, but he never came to describe any one of the types. That was right. Enrique, oh, that came in Enrique Chile. Enrique Chile, yeah. 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 So that yeah. came from my own uh, observations, but mostly from automatic writing. It automatic came writing? Yeah, it came to me through automatic writing. What did? Uh, the, the specific information and it's any types. Ab ab about any types, which yes. I then verified through observation, right. because I was surrounded by people right. I was teaching and exploring with. And I had, <coughs> I had friends in Eureka who told me essentially the same story, yeah. that John there Hayley. was no mention of, no others besides, you yes. said there was no mention of any types except from you. Yes. So that you were the origin <coughs> of the enneotype concept. And you were the origin of the word enneotype. Yes. You suggested it, and I adopted yes. that idea. Yeah. And, and, and then we've got people like Richard Rohr, who's a, uh, a, a Catholic priest who says that all paths lead to heaven, that Buddhists and Christians are the same, and, and actually Christians can learn from Buddhists. And he says that God is in the tree and pantheism, all sorts of heresy. And, and he's the one who made up, perpetuated the story that the Enneagram's Christian because it comes from Desert Fathers. How does that make a Christian in the first place? Yeah. You know, so uh, the Enneagram, bad news, Jesus calling should be burned or thrown away. Same with the Course in Miracles. In fact, I'm going to put a link in the video below, video description below of why I threw a Course in Miracles into the trash. Yeah. Um, it's just all of this automatic writing. I was eating it up. I don't know about you, but I would go to the old metaphysical stores and mm -hmm. I'd get the old books that were channeled writing. And I was convinced I'd find the secret in there. And it was, it was always just taking me one more rabbit trail, one more hamster wheel and never, ever getting to the, tr I was a truth seeker, you know, what would you call today a truther? until mm -hmm. I read the Bible that had been on my shelf all along. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I, I, I was fascinated by automatic writing. It was actually one of my favorite ways to channel. And I did it for family, I did it for friends, I did it for clients. I actually even did it for a well-known medium um, right before she started one of her shows in California. And that information was in that automatic writing. And like we said before, when you see that little bit, how the devil mixes in a little bit of truth and he twists it and there's lies, there's always going to be something though, because otherwise it wouldn't be deception. Mm -hmm. uh, we do need to test the spirits. And you mentioned that at the top of this video, First John 4, 1 tells us to test the spirits. So it's really important. I encourage everybody to go into the origin um, test the people uh, with the test the enneagram. Test what we're saying. Test automatic writing. But go and look at the origin of these practices, and you will find more times than not they are rooted in the occult. Um, and be, don't just get fascinated by a supernatural experience. Don't be fascinated by a supernatural experience thinking that it always comes from God. It comes from God or the devil. So that's why you really need to get in there and test that, test that experience. And scripture is sufficient. Instead of always looking for more, be satisfied that we have the word of God. It's a gift from God. We have all that we need. The canon is closed. There are no new revelations today. We have all that we need. Amen, sister. We, we have it. And, you know, one of the things I just want to say is I taught automatic writing in many of my classes over 20 years. And I, I relate to what you were saying about being fascinated with the supernatural. A lot of people, they get the sense of specialness or chosenness when they do automatic writing, that they're in the club now. And, and it's just a trap. Um, the, the worldly truth is that anyone can do automatic writing. If you can type or use a pen, you can automatic write and you can open yourself up to the devil coming through. Um, but it's not, it's not who you think it is. It's not God. It's not the Holy spirit. It's not Jesus. It's not your deceased loved one. It is not mother Mary. It's not, you know, your guardian angel or Archangel Michael, any of those beings who we thought it was when we were, doing automatic writing, it's, and, and you can see it, as you mentioned, First John 4, um, to test the spirits, they do not confess Jesus. There's no way 
that Jesus himself said it, the kingdom divided against itself will fall. So Satan would never point anyone to the true Jesus. Satan would never point anyone to Jesus's words in the Bible. He, he, Satan knows that that would just, he'd lose followers. So uh, do not engage in this. It's not a harmless activity. It is not journaling. It is not channeling your higher self. There's not even a word to higher self. That's not even a, that's a phrase Richard Rohr and, and I did. I popularized it in the new age. It's not a synonym for your true self. Um, your true self is, as Jesus described, you're either a child of the devil, or if you have repented and given your life to Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're an adopted child of God. That's your two identities that are available to us. Mm -hmm. And Actually, we're not, it's, you know, it's, if people want to dig for their true self, like it's someone good, we're born sinful. We inherited that from Adam and Eve. And so the only way to have righteousness is to be clothed in Jesus's righteousness through being born again. Amen. And that's the pride again is, um, and that's what the new age does. It elevates the self, mm -hmm. ourselves. It elevates self thinking that we can do self healing, that we can get more knowledge, that we are entitled to this. Rhonda Byrne from The Secret says we can have and should have whatever we want. And that's not the, that is not what Jesus teaches us. As a matter of fact, we have all that we need in Christ Jesus. He doesn't talk to us about having everything that we want. And um, I just echo um, Doreen and just say, listen, please, please, please understand also that it's not a gift from God. A lot of these, a lot of people come to me and they say, but I didn't choose this. I can't help it. It's a gift. It's not a gift from God. The door was open somehow, some way at some point. And then once you once you start giving it your attention and you start seeking it out and you're intrigued by it and you're thinking about it, now you're going down that rabbit hole of destruction in the new age. But you can turn from it. You can go to Jesus. He will deliver you from it. He is faithful and he's the only one. You don't need to go to deliverance ministries. No. Go to Jesus Christ directly. He will deliver you. And the Bible gives us a balanced uh, approach at spiritual warfare. So if you are hearing things or seeing things, or you started writing and doing this automatic writing, you can stop, you can walk away. It's a choice, not a gift. Go to Jesus for that deliverance, not a ministry. Amen. And I, I absolutely, 100%, um, I went to deliverance ministries when I was first being called by Jesus out of the new age before I was saved and going through spiritual warfare and the deliverance ministries gave me relief for a minute, maybe a day, but then things got even worse. So I just, you know, Jesus did empower the disciples to cast out demons, but he doesn't say he empowered us to do that. When he said these things and more you can do, you can do greater than I, he's not talking about casting out demons. He's talking about evangelizing the, the great commission that he talked about, that we are to go and make disciples of all nations and share the gospel. That's what he's talking about. We can do more because we are we have access to the whole world now. So Amen. yeah, um, so automatic writing, if you've got any channeled books, including uh, Course in Miracles, uh, Jesus Calling, uh, any of my old books or cards, throw them out. Do not donate them so that other people would be deceived. Um, if you're gonna throw them out, I would say tear up the pages um, throw water on them to destroy them. If you can burn them, we just don't want them to go in the hands of anyone else. Just get rid of them. That's what I did. And, um, and there was just this sense of relief that they were out of my house. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Doreen, for that. I really appreciate doing these videos with you and um, sharing the truth with with people. And I have to say, I totally agree. I always tell people, burn them. Hey, have a little, have a little, what is it? A bonfire, get a marshmallow out there, get a nice little piece of chocolate and make a s'mores and get rid of the devil and invite Jesus to, into your heart and your life today as Lord. The gospel of Jesus Christ has the most amazing saving power. So I pray that everybody would turn away from automatic writing. It is demonic. It is an occult practice. It is not from God and throw out and destroy and burn and make a s'mores uh, <laughs> and, oh, and 
and come to Jesus Christ today as you are. That's the, that's the good news of the gospel. You don't have to clean up your act. Come to Jesus today as you are. And he will do a work on your heart. Like you said before, um, you know, the new age is the spiritism. They, it steals from all of these false religions, all of these false concepts and philosophies. But Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So we can't have Jesus and chakras or Jesus and automatic writing. Um, and I know that I choose to go with the one who is the way to our father in heaven. Amen. The only way. The only way.